Do you struggle with excess belly fat? You work out, you eat right, you do everything you're supposed to do, but you still can't lose those pounds around the midsection. Well, guess what? It might not be your fault. It might actually be programmed into your genes. That's right. Your genes might be determining how hard it is to lose that weight around your midsection. And if you've got the genes that code for weight gain, you can diet and exercise all day long and still not see the benefits of the guy next to you. But don't worry because in this video, I'm going to show you a simple trick that turns off all the genes associated with weight gain and unlocks the weight loss and that trim midsection that you're looking for. If you're new to this channel, I'm Dr. Dave Clayton and I drop a new video every week teaching you how to get the most from your diet and exercise in order to improve your health. So let's dig into this idea that your genes control your midsection. If your genes are controlling the amount of abdominal fat in your belly, then you know, kind of like what's the point of all this diet and exercise, right? I mean, you might as well just drink soda and eat pizza and enjoy life. Well, it's not that bad because you can actually turn off those genes by flipping a very simple switch. But before I get into it, I want to just explain some of the science and some of the data behind it so that you know not only why it works, but how powerful this can be. So let's start with some of the science behind the genetics of weight loss. Well, there's 77 plus genes that actually individually code for various aspects of weight gain. And studies show that the more of these genes that you have, the more likely you are to gain weight over time and the harder it's going to be to lose it. And this explains why, you know, if you look at two people, one person might eat the same way as the next, but their bodies might look totally different. And in fact, studies show that over 90 per, up to 90% of the a difference in body weight from one person to another is actually encoded in their genetics, that your genes actually determine whether that hamburger sticks to your midsection or whether you burn it right off. And I'm gonna explain how. And explaining how really involves looking at how fat cells operate. So I'm gonna dig into a little bit of this science for a few minutes so you understand where these genes work and how changing your genetics is going to unlock the weight loss that we're talking about, that you're looking for. So your body starts with all of these pre-adipocytes and what these are is they're precursors for adipocytes or fat cells. So your body starts with what are like essentially stem cells for your fat cells. They're dormant little tiny things and then we activate them. So we tell them to mature into a full-fledged fat cell. And at this step, they've got two choices. They can become either a brown cell or a white cell. Now the brown cell is the one we want. This is a metabolically active cell. It's actually like a little engine burning fat to generate our body heat. It's what keeps us warm. Now the other type of cell is the white cell. And the white cell is a storage depot for fat. It's kind of like just storing up fat for hibernation or something like who hibernates, but that's what that's for. It's a storage depot. So, you know, when you think about somebody with a higher or low metabolism, what we're really thinking about is kind of whether they're burning all this fat or whether they're storing all this fat. And we can, we, our body can decide whether they want to create more of these brown cells or more white cells. Now we all have some white cells. It's part of our physiology. So those white cells are like balloons. They can blow up or they can shrink. It's totally determined by how permeable the cell membrane is. So if you picture kind of fat floating by in the bloodstream, if the fat cell has a very permeable membrane, then it's bringing in all of this fat from the bloodstream and it's blowing up and blowing up and blowing up. And of course that makes our midsection blow up and blow up and blow up. But if that membrane is not permeable, if it's really tightly bound, then fat just goes on by and we burn it or excrete it or, you know, but it doesn't get stored around the midsection, which is the important thing. So there's three steps to this pathway. We got to turn an adipocyte or pre-adipocyte into a full-fledged fat cell. 
we've got to mature it into a full-fledged fat cell. Then we've got to turn it into a storage white cell or a metabolically active brown cell. And then we've got to decide how permeable we want the membranes of those white cells to be. And each of those three steps is determined by your genetics. So if we turn genes on, then they are creating all of these fat cells. So we're creating lots and lots of cells. Then we're telling them to become white storage cells and then we're making them super permeable so they blow up and blow up and blow up. And that's what those 77 plus genes are doing is they're telling your body not to be a high metabolism person. They're telling your body to be a slow metabolism fat storage depot because we might go hibernating next winter and we want to be ready for it. And what we're going to talk about today is how we're going to turn all of those genes off with one simple tip that is going to be an easy change to your diet and it's shown to really turn all those genes off and unlock that weight loss that we're all looking for. But first I want to get into some of the data on how effective this is. And there's two trials that really caught my eye. One is a study of over 25,000 men and women. They looked at three large studies, they aggregated all the data. This was a super high quality report. And what they found was that if you had more of these 77 genes, your body mass index was statistically higher and higher and higher. Every 10 genes was another notch up on the body mass index. So the more genes you have, the worse off it was for your body weight. And to the point where if you had all of these genes and they were all turned on, then your body mass index was way higher than normal. So then we looked at, okay, let's flip the switch on these people. Let's look at the subset of people who have changed their diet and added this one simple trick that I'm going to explain to you here. And what they found was that not only did they not have that high body mass index that the people with the genes, their peer group with the genes had, but it actually turned off those genes to the extent that their body mass index was actually lower than the median. That's pretty impressive because what it means is that by turning these genes off, these people were really unlocking the type of benefits from their diet and exercise that we all want to get. And the people who didn't flip that switch, I mean, they were stuck. They had that stubborn belly fat that we're trying to get rid of. So then let's look at another trial of 500 middle-aged women. These are women in their forties and their fifties. And what we find is that for the women who don't flip the switch, who just diet and exercise and they're on the treadmill and they're on the elliptical and they're eating right and they're trying as hard as they can, they gain 75% more weight than the women who just flipped that simple switch. So what we see is that flipping the switch and turning off these genes is undeniably one of the most important things you can do for your body to unlock weight loss and to lose that stubborn belly fat. Because if you're trying to fight your genes, you're going to lose. If your genes are coded to keep storing fat and prepare for hibernation, what are you going to do, right? You can't fight that. So let's not fight it. Let's figure out what we can do to turn that switch off. And the interesting thing is that in all these trials, the switch was the same. It was omega-3 fatty acids, fish oil. That's right, fish oil was the intervention that unlocked all of this weight loss across all of these tens of thousands of people. And how does this work? It's that the omega-3s are telling those genes like a little trigger, they're turning off the gene expression, they're changing the epigenetics, the way those genes are expressed, and they're changing all three elements of the way fat cells develop. They're telling the pre-adipocytes not to turn into full-fledged fat cells. They're telling fat cells to go become a metabolically active brown cell. Don't become a storage depot, these white storage cells. Don't do that. And for the white storage cells that we do have, they're telling those membranes to close up. Don't take any more fat in. And that gives us the opportunity to start burning that off as our body becomes more metabolically active, less prone to kind of a hibernation profile, and we start to lose that weight. So taking the omega-3 is that one trigger that unlocks all of this benefit across the whole uh, maturation cycle of a, of a fat cell and gives you the trim midsection that you're looking for. Now, most of the studies show that the amount of 
omega-3s that you need for this is really the higher is better. So a gram a day is kind of the bare minimum. Two to three grams is really what I would be shooting for based on the data. And it's almost better to be getting that from fish like trout or salmon rather than taking a supplement. And the reason is simple is that, you know, the fish in as part of your diet actually replaces meals. So you picture, you know, on a day you might have a burger and then take a fish oil supplement or you would just have fish, right? So by, by replacing the burger with the fish, we're obviously making a difference, but across all of these studies, it kind of didn't matter. You got more benefit by eating the fish, but you got almost as much benefit from taking the supplement. And the difference is probably just in terms of your total nutrient balance in terms of what you're eating every day. Now, it's important to look at one other element of this, which is, you know, I kind of think of it as omega-3's evil stepbrother, right? It's omega-6 fatty acids. Now, omega-3's and omega-6's are both essential fatty acids. We need to get them from our diet, and they're both important, but omega-3's and omega-6's are kind of like polar opposites. You know, whatever omega-3 does, omega-6 generally does the opposite. And this plays a role in inflammation and all sorts of other pathways, but it's important for fat as well because all of these triggers to turn off these genes, well, omega-3s turn them off, but omega-6s turn them on. So your body's really looking at not only are you getting the omega-3s, but are you getting too many omega-6s? You know, it's kind of like they're both fighting for the trigger and it's who's gonna win. So what we want to do is decrease the amount of omega-6 in our diet and i've got a great master class that explains kind of the, a lot of the science behind omega-3 and omega-6 and all their benefits plus i throw in some more uh, topics on nutrition that are relevant to health um, and this is a free master class I'll, I'll, I'll leave a link below in the description uh, i encourage you to check it out because i'll go into a lot more detail on it there but for the purpose of this video, I'll just say that omega-6 is really rampant in our diet. So we get it from meat and dairy and processed foods. We get it from soybean oil, corn oil. It's kind of all throughout our food supply such that most of us are getting 20 times more omega-6 than omega-3. So supplementing the omega-3 is important, but reducing the amount of omega-6 is also important, probably as important as, as the omega-3 is. And if we look at just another look at the data that I showed you earlier, I'm gonna just change it a little differently here and show you that the most benefit, especially in this uh, trial on the 500 women, what we see is that when we looked at adding omega-3 or looking at reducing omega-6, actually the biggest benefit came when you did both. And that's where we see that the women who had the highest omega-6 to omega-3 ratio relative to the lowest, had almost twice as much weight gain as the ones who you know were in the optimal category so this is really important and um, changing both of these levers is going to unlock that you know loss of the belly fat it's going to unlock the weight gain the results from your diet and exercise and it's going to tell your genetics to start being more metabolically active and to stop thinking about hibernation stop thinking about storing that belly fat and let's unlock that weight loss so what do we do now? Number one is you want to start eating the fatty fish, the salmon and the trout as often as you can. You want to get a high quality fish oil supplement and start taking at least a gram, probably more like two to three grams a day. And you want to decrease the amount of omega-6 in the diet by reducing corn oil, soybean oil, processed foods, um, and uh, grain fed meat and dairy uh, that are very high in omega-6. If you're gonna have meat and dairy, definitely spend the extra money on a grass-fed variety. It's gonna have a much uh, lower quantity of omega-6 and a much higher quantity of omega-3. So there's your secret to unlocking massive benefits from diet and exercise by simply taking a fish oil supplement and changing the amount of omega-3 to omega-6 in your diet. I hope you like this video. I'll leave some links in the description below. And if you like this content, please hit the subscribe button. I've got a new video every week teaching you how to maximize the benefits that you get from nutrition and fitness with respect to your health. I'll see you next time.